Howdy YouTube and welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the prep, masking and paintwork on this brown Porsche Macan S. The name of the color is Mahogany and the paint code is LM8Y. I actually think this is quite a cool color. It reminds me of like a Coke bottle brown type color. I don't know, I'm one of those ones with colors. Not most colors really excite me. I don't like really loud colors, especially on a car. Um, Certain cars they suit, but, you know, I wouldn't go and put uh, holographic flakes all over my car, personally. Um, but a color like this, just, I don't know, and a nice car, I think it really suits it. Uh, I guess that's down to opinion at the end of the day, isn't it? But anyway, there was a small repair across the back of the rear door and then over the quarter panel arch as well. So I've decided to, we've obviously primed it up already and then we're giving it a bit of a block down. Had a few people mention, hey Gunny, you should really be using dust extraction. It's been something that's been on my must-do list for, well, too long now, too long. Um, but I've got something in the pipe works so that hopefully within a month or two, I'll have a proper dust extraction system and maybe even a electrical orbital sander, maybe a Merca one. I've heard some good re reports about it. I actually had someone leave a comment just this morning saying you should get one. But um, yeah, anyway, so I blocked it down with just some 180 grit to start off with just to make sure I get those lines nice and straight and uh, yeah, nice straight body work on it. And um, just using the orbital sander to remove those 180 grit scratches, but not before I uh, put some guide coat down, obviously. Um, guide coat, it's not a necessary, you don't have to use it. Um, you know, a good painter will still be able to identify a 180 grit scratch between a 500 grit scratch. Um, and yeah, it's not to say that just because you put guide coat down and you sanded the guide coat off that it's sanded properly anyway. So you still do have to inspect and look for those larger scratches. Um, obviously next up, use a piece of 500 grit to go around the primer edges. Nothing worse than having daggy edges, uh, big buildups of primer. Um, if they're really big, sometimes it's worth getting that old piece of 180 grit that you blocked it down with quickly scuffing over the edges and then finishing it off with 500 grit. Um, I did clean the entire panels down prior to doing all my prep work. However, I did not get any footage of that, so I couldn't include that in the video. I don't know why I didn't come to think of it. And um, obviously I taped up the surrounding panels too. Um, so just obviously so that I didn't damage them when I'm doing my prep work. And I'm just using 600 grit on the orbital sander with the interface pad to do my blend areas. Um, and then I'll be using a piece of gray scotch bright and also a 800 grit soft pad to get into all the edges. Um, you can swap the 600 grit for 800 or 1000 grit. I'm using solvent paint on this job. So 600 grit, that's all I need to use. However, the other painters, they usually go for 800 grit. You do have to be careful when using 600 because it's that bit coarser more prone to cut throughs, but if you're careful, it shouldn't be a big issue. Um, main, one of the main reasons I do it is because you'll use half the amount of sandpaper. I'm able to use one piece per panel most of the time. Sometimes you'll even stretch it out to two panels if the uh, paint work is nice and clean and there's no waxes or anything to clog your sandpaper up. Um, and that's another reason I really should be using a dust extraction because I'll probably actually get a little bit more out of the sandpaper as well because it's not clogging up with its own dust. Um, so yeah, I'm also finishing off the primed areas with the 600 grit, but I do that last. So I do my blend areas first, and then uh, rather than getting the dust from the prime primer dust onto my blend area, uh, if that makes sense, because um, you do have to be careful with that kind of stuff when you are doing wet sanding. I was always taught when I started my apprenticeship to do um, most of my sanding dry, but then when it came to the final stage of scotch brighting, all the edges, the shiny edges, they would uh, get me to do it wet with this uh, scuff stuff paste. Um, so that would sort of drag all of the dust out of the scratches that you've created with your dry sanding. Um, so it wouldn't be such a big issue with contamination from your primer dust. Uh, but these days you do, uh, yeah, if you're doing dry sanding these days, you do have to be very careful. I've when I first started doing dry sanding, I made that mistake a few times because I was just used to um, not really thinking about the primer dust ending up in my blend areas. Um, but yeah, 
and you'll even notice when I'm wiping the job down with wax and grease remover, again, that I wipe my blend areas down first to make sure they're really clean rather than wiping over the primer area then having that primer dust in the rag getting wiped over my blend area. So as you can see, onto the uh, Scotch Bright stage, making sure that there's no shiny edges. Um, pretty important stage, obviously, because if the paint isn't sanded properly, well, then you won't get adhesion. However, I will actually be using a bit of an adhesion promoter. Um, I guess it's a, you know, a little bit of a last resort. If you did miss anything, the adhesion promoter would help. But I'm not actually really using it so much as an adhesion promoter as much as a sealer, like a transparent sealer uh, slash blending aid. This is probably one of those colors that's on the edge of not needing a blending aid, like a wet bed they call it in America. Um, however, if you're ever not sure, just use it. You know, it doesn't take much time and or material to use it. So yeah. It's always better to be safe than sorry then you know it might look fine in the spray booth you then get it outside in the sunlight or the daylight and you realize that you can actually see that blend or a bit of a halo around the blend um, because there is quite a bit of um, metallic and uh, pearl paint in this color so once I've got all the prep work done obviously blew it off uh, get all the dust off it keep it clean as possible um, and then I'm polishing up a section on the rear bumper bar to match my color to. Most of the time I would usually not match to a bumper bar, however, this is the only section on the car that my color is going edge to edge to. Most of the time bumper bars are a little bit different than the body of the cars. I think that's because a lot of the time they sort of sublet their bumper bar paintwork to other companies, like they might get a plastic company or even if it's done in a different section of the workshop or something like that. They may use a different batch of paint or even down to the minute level plastic can hold uh, paint a little bit differently than steel or aluminium just a quick look at the curves and what I do before I mix my color up so I plugged I took that those three readings I took three readings with the spectro plugged it up to the computer and then it gave me all that data I won't get too involved in the color matching stage However, I went and mixed the color up, sprayed it out onto a test card, and then I'm having a look at it now. As you can see straight away, it's quite blue. It's got this bit of a ghosty look to it. It's not really that good. Um, but as I say, I'm not getting too involved in the color matching stage. Um, I do have a couple of color matching videos. It's one of those things. It's just going to take time and trial and error. I actually learned a lot of my color matching at trade school. Um, I felt when I was at trade school that I knew most of the prep work and the rest of it, but I did feel like I was lacking in the uh, color matching stage. So I personally focused mainly on color matching. And um, yeah, I guess one of those things at work, like um, say for instance, if I was to have done this job as an apprentice and wasted say four or five or 600 mils trying to get this color, that's 50, 60, $70. You do that on a few jobs and it's gonna start costing the boss money. They're not really fans of having you waste the money. Whereas at trade school, the um, the paint's paid for, uh, whether or not be partly subsidized by the government or they get deals through um, whatever, prom promotional deals through um, the paint companies themselves. Uh, but yeah, the paint at trade school is paid for anyway. So if you waste a bit of it here and there, it's not as much of a big deal. Um, so yeah, onto the masking stage, as you can see, I didn't get the footage of all the edge masking, but obviously did it. Um, it's pretty important stage masking, make sure you get it right. It, like any stage, if you don't get it right, it can completely ruin the job. And if you don't get all of them right, well, <laughs> you've made a balls up. And I actually, I say that because, uh, Spray Smart Refinishing on Instagram, he um, posted this photo up a couple of days ago, and man, I recommend going and checking him out on Instagram, Sp Spray Smart Refinishing. He does some pretty cool posts, and um, yeah, the, the job that he took photos of the other day, oh, terrible. De like, just about everything you can imagine, shrink back, poor blends, um, paint cracking, orange peel, you name it, the paint defect, it was on that job, you know? Um, and it's sad to see it kind of that kind of work gives us as a whole a bad name unfortunately um, uh, but yeah anyway continuing on with the masking and we'll get some paint on in a couple of minutes masking is a stage 
I've said it previously, I find it a little bit hard to narrate, but I know a lot of people can pick up a few things by watching my techniques. One thing that I picked up off uh, Rickster, he left a um, comment in the comment section because he noticed that I was always just getting um, bits of masking tape and wrapping it around and putting it into the door handle. He's like, man, get some foam tape, you know, the dart tape, the foam tape, um, wrap that around and as you can see in that door handle, it just seems to open up a little bit easier and less likely to sort of get caught on the tack rag when you're tack ragging it or prep soling it and popping out. So, yeah, I, you know, like this channel is, it's not all about me. If you guys think that there's something better that I can do, uh, be sure to leave us some criticism, feedback, whatever it be. I don't mind um, as long as it's constructive. You start saying, oh, you're, you're a total loser because I don't like your tattoos and you're a dumb bastard or whatever. Yeah, you might be crossing the line. But um, yeah, little even little things like um, gloves. I never used to wear gloves when I started making this channel. I thought they were put for pussies and I'm, yeah, I never wore them. And it actually just got to the point where it's just easier to wear them than answer every single question. Uh, and now there is no way I would go back um, yeah, there's been many or other occasions like I can even thank a few uh, people hounding me about not using a dust extraction system um, for actually prompting me to get a bit more serious about getting one sorted. Look, I would have gone down to Bunnings probably six months ago, but yeah, I've got something hopefully teed up with Merca and I'll be able to get myself a really like top quality one, maybe with a electric orbital sander as well. Um, but yeah, here we go, just uh, down the bottoms of the doors. Sometimes it's just easier to put a bit of paper down there. You don't have to, sometimes I plastic it, sometimes I paper it. Um, but the paper is obviously a lot less likely. It's a bit heavier, uh, a bit thicker, so less likely of flapping around when you're painting. And just using one of those atomizer bottles to wipe uh, some spray some Prepsol uh, or wax and grease remover over the panels and then wipe off with my Sontara wipes. I was about to call them dew point wipes, but then not. They're Sontara. Um, yeah, just make sure. I, I like to use a new one for each job, especially for a blend area. Like I might pick up and reuse one if I'm putting colour over the entire panel. So I'll, I'll keep this rag, put it up in the corner, and if there's a bumper bar which I'm colouring the whole bumper of, I might reuse it, you know, save a couple of dollars here and there. Why not? And as I mentioned before, always wiping my blend areas first and then wipe my primed areas. And then I can flip the rag over to the dry spot and wipe over it again. If there is any little bits of liquid left, it'll dry pretty soon in the spray booth, um, but you don't want there to be any wet prep sole or wax and grease remover on there when you're, still, when you're about to start spraying, obviously. Um, and now I'm wiping over the uh, plastic this is something I never used to do. I've mentioned it in some of the previous videos, but I've found even if it's that 5%, if, if it stops three pieces or two pieces of dust in one job, it's worth doing. What does it take? 20, 30 seconds, you know? Um, and those uh, 2000 grit discs that, you, that they use for uh, denibbing, quite expensive. And the less bits of uh, dust that you get in a paint job, um, the less polishing it's gonna cost and less bits of sandpaper and time and all that kind of stuff and I don't know, I get a kick out of making a job look nicer. I don't do any of the polishing here. Well, very rare occasions that I'll do polishing. So it's not like, you know, sometimes I do get uh, panels and just like, there's crap all around. I'm like, yeah, what the hell happened there, you know? Um, sometimes you get that in these kind of shops, you know, it's not like state of the art, everything isn't new. You do have guys out there using orbital sanders without uh, dust extraction which I would like to stop everyone from doing, but when I came back here, I tried to get everyone into it, and it just didn't work. <laughs> I've tried so hard, so just got to the point where it's like, ah, stop it. Can't beat them, join them. So whack me respirator on and make a dust cloud. Um, but yeah, when you're walking through that dust cloud in the way to your booth, it's like, you're down before you start. You can do all, all the right things, but sometimes on a job like this, I'll just enter the booth, have my clear coat, base coat, everything in all the separate guns, and I won't even exit until I'm finished painting. For one, for that reason, because yeah, you go outside, you get dust on you, you bring that inside. Even opening and closing the doors can, um, a little bit of dust can come inside. 
although the the spray boost should actually push a little bit of air outward so it shouldn't actually suck dust in anyway um, but yeah I'm just using that triple uh, 2s as I was mentioning earlier as it's kind of here I'd say it's mainly uses blending aid um, and yeah as I said sealer so it'll seal down any cut throughs that I may have had um, there was one or two tiny little cut throughs on that wheel arch um, that was on my Devilbest GTI Pro uh, blue one and just using the Savola 4600 Extreme uh, with the DVR Aqua Air Cap on it and 1.3. Been using this gun ever since uh, I got it for base coat, and yeah, it's retained its number one spot. Well, for base coat um, for over six months, so it's doing quite well. I'm pretty in impressed with it. A few weird things about it, like why the gun filter doesn't even like their gun filter doesn't fit in their own gun. It falls out like. Okay, how the hell that got past the R&D, I don't know, but um, if that was the case, you'd just pull the, um, the gun filter out of the, the pot and just like, this gun, there's no option for it, strain your paint. Obviously, if you're using PPS, it's just totally a non-issue, and most people these days, I'm probably, eh, maybe half, half people these days probably use it. These days, I'm, I'm happy using pots, they do the job, save the boss a few bucks. Um, so, yeah. A job like this, two, two to three coats is going to be enough, uh, if you're ever not sure. Like, my rule of thumb is get it so it looks covered and then put another coat on. So if it looks completely covered after one coat, another coat's going to do it. And uh, yeah, Standox base coat, I'm going to be using the Standox standard clear over the top of it on this one too. Quick look at the blend. The reason I'm bringing that color up around that fuel flap is that if I was to, uh, well, it's it's tough to know the top and the bottom on the actual fuel flap itself. Like, imagine that because um, I needed to blend the color halfway out the fuel flap if I wanted to keep the color below that line. Then, I, like, imagine you got you painted the top edge instead of the bottom edge. Yeah, it's good a little bit out possibly when you put it back on so I decided it was just easier to put my color right up around that fuel flap and then fully color the fuel flap itself so yeah clear coat with the GTI Pro Light Nebula it's the same as all the other Pro Lights it's just a different design on it that's all it is um, I've got the digital gauge on it so settings have stayed the same <coughs> sorry getting a dry throat talking too much shit um, yeah, settings have stayed the same as they have for ages. Two bar, full fan, uh, four, three and a half to four turns out on the fluid. You find you're getting runs or something like that, wind the fluid in a bit. Maybe even turn the pressure up a touch. Um, if it's if you're getting orange peel, yeah, turn the pressure up a touch. If it's colder weather, try heating that clear up. That's what I've been doing these days. Um, you may laugh, but I put it in the microwave 20 seconds. And I've, I've told a couple of people that, like a few people have messaged me saying, man, I'm having troubles laying my clear down, it's getting orange peel and all that. Uh, they were from Australia as well, so I knew it was gonna be cold time of year. I said, man, heat clear up. Um, heat clear up, maybe turn the pressure up, make sure you've got it around two bar, maybe even a touch more if it's really cold. Um, and gets back to me a couple of days later and says, man, perfect, heaps better, you know. So most issues you're having, they're not going to be hard fixes. It, um, I don't know. One of my mates from Melbourne used to work with him at uh, a shop in Hawthorne. It was like a pretty damn nice shop. We'd do jobs like this all the time, like real nice cars, you know, all prestige vehicles and that. Um, he actually got back into the trade from watching my videos. Like he was supposedly out of the trade for a while and. He got back to me a few weeks ago and he's like, man, I'm really struggling, you know. Um, just sort of found himself in a bit of a rut, struggling with colours, getting a run here and there. And this trade can be a real pain in the ass. And I know that feeling. Like, I've been there. I've been in the position where you just feel like packing it all up <laughs> and leaving. But you just got to keep at it, man. Just, um, just isolate those problem issues like don't look at it and like oh everything's stuck you know isolate 
If it's color matching, all right, we've got that to work on, and if you're getting runs. I would say getting runs is a fairly simple fix most of the time. Make sure you've got enough pressure, make sure the clear isn't too cold, and uh, make sure your fluid isn't wound out too far. Wind it in a half a turn. Slow down a bit if you need to um, while having less fluid. Um, get that gun nice and close and move nice and quick. That's the way I personally do it. But that's about it for this video. I did actually miss this car on its way out, so I won't be able to give you guys a ending as such when the car is finished off. I do apologize about that. I usually do like to give you guys a ending when the car's all finished off, but sometimes I can't do it because I am busy and there is only one of me. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and if you have, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, a bit of feedback down below. Until the next one, Gunners, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.